Hello. Uh, today we have a short uh, Google some of code office hours uh, uh, to contribute or something on the call. And uh, since we do not have uh, so many people, we will just go through uh, Q&A. Um, and uh, Milma uh, had a question about uh, how many participants uh, we accepted to SOC, right? Okay, so yeah, to answer this question, uh, we can just go to the uh, uh, to our website. Just a second. Yeah. My mistake is in typing. Okay, so here you can find history of uh, our GSOC participation. So you can see that in two previous years we had seven student projects. How this number is uh, formed? Uh, this number is formed on uh, the based on the capacity of org admins and mentors and on the applications. Um, in Jenkins GSOC, uh, we intend to have uh, not so many projects. Uh, we mostly focus on uh, finding uh, high quality applications and forming strong mentor teams. Last year, mm -hmm. we had a strong requirement that we have at least three uh, mentors for each project. And yeah, it uh, commonly limits uh, the number of uh, projects we are going to accept. Uh, so, for example, here, if you take go to just some client and project ideas, you can see that we had quite a long list, and actually we've got um, you know, quite a lot of good applications um, for this project. But uh, yeah, we weren't able to form uh, uh, mentor teams for all applications. And uh, we just requested seven slots uh, that year. And we got um, uh, seven projects from Google. So that's why we had uh, the seven projects. There is no particular uh, hard number we set. Yeah. So we will uh, be working with potential mentors, with org admins, and based on that, uh, after the applications, we will apply for a project's number. Uh, but the reasonable expectation that we will have a relatively low number of projects. So there are organizations which have 50 projects, uh, mostly foundations. In the case of uh, the Jenkins project, yeah, we are looking approximately at the same number as in previous years, maybe a bit less, maybe a bit higher, depending on uh, how many uh, mentors and project ideas we get. Does it answer your question? Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, another mm -hmm. one is, uh, uh, I'm a beginner. I'm a, uh, like, uh, I haven't participated uh, to GSOC before. Mm -hmm. So uh, can we contribute to the past, uh, past projects of yours? Um, you uh, you have uh, mentioned three or four projects to be uh, continued uh, in next yeah in next year and mm -hmm. uh, should we contribute to them or can we uh, contribute the past project of yours um yes yeah, so basically you can contribute anyway within the Jenkins ecosystem so when you do contributions uh, uh, there are multiple objectives uh, you may have Firstly, studying the subject area. So Jenkins is a huge project. It includes mm -hmm. multiple technologies, multiple components. And if you can see the particular project, then uh, the best uh, opportunity is uh, to focus on something uh, with, along the lines of your project idea or along the lines of your personal interests. So for example, yeah, this is just a sketch. We will have more project ideas. So now we have three. But for example, uh, you want to work on uh, automatic specification generator. You go here and yeah, uh, there is a description which needs uh, update. Uh, but here you can find uh, some references uh, to existing components, to newcomer friendly tickets. You can start exploring this area. So for example, take something uh, which is referenced, uh, for example, ticket, or um, take a look at similar implementations like uh, Again, I'm not sure why skeleton generator is here, but for example, so Swaggy Jenkins, etc. You can just take a look at uh, 
and these implementations maybe contribute there or maybe take a small uh, area within this project and try doing that so for example uh, yeah you can have automatic specification generator or you could start from uh, doing specifications for particular parts of jenkins rest api and uh, it would still help uh, you to understand the subject area and it yeah. would also uh, help you to make just contributions uh, in the project because for example uh, yeah there is a lot of plugins uh, which would benefit from uh, rest api specification even if it's uh, generated manually or you could already play with some automatic annotation processing so yeah basically that's uh, the idea you take uh, an interesting area and just uh, look at uh, smaller contributions okay thank you mm -hmm. Yeah, so regarding uh, previous projects and project ideas, you can definitely take a look at uh, these areas because all projects, um, uh, in all these projects, uh, there are few future work sections. So you can just go and uh, even if it's not uh, listed uh, right on the project page, you can take a look at the presentations. Uh, all students make presentations after phase three and you can find uh, a uh, list of uh, tasks to be completed. Or for example, here there is just a roadmap link, which references a few tickets. So again, it's something you could took, uh, take a look at, because if we had a project last year, continuation of this project is definitely a potential project idea, even if it's not on the list at the moment. If you have a student who is asking about this particular project idea, we could contact uh, past mentors or other contributors and see whether we could have a project which continues this idea. It's definitely a good opportunity if you want to explore past projects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, in 2021, there are like three or four new projects over there. Uh, are you going to increase the number of projects and those three or four projects are to be continued? Um, do you mean these projects? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so these are basically uh, projects I took uh, from the previous year, which uh, didn't have a student working on them. And since I am a potential mentor interested in this project, uh, so I put them as draft project ideas uh, for this year. Uh, we still uh, haven't uh, announced uh, GSOC 2021 uh, in wider developer community. So basically, these uh, project ideas do not represent a final list at all. Usually in September, we reach out uh, to stakeholders, uh, to active contributors, to GSOC participants uh, to create a project ideas list. Um, we will actually need it for our project application in January, but we try to build a list in December. So this list will definitely grow and there will be more potential mentors and more project ideas. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. And again, these project ideas are just project ideas. If you have your own project idea, it's totally fine to discuss it and explore it. So in this case, it's uh, good to reach out to the community earlier so that we could look for potential mentors for your project idea. Uh, if you have a new project idea, uh, mm -hmm. it's like a solution for our own problem. Uh, is, it, uh, uh, is it okay to, uh, is it okay to uh, present you? Yeah, that's okay. Like, like it is not a public uh, public problem or a common problem, or mm -hmm. it is not re uh, relevant with the uh, Jenkins technology or like that. Uh, I mean, uh, it is a solution for our own problem. And is it okay uh, mm -hmm. to uh, present as a new project idea? Okay, so let's uh, break it down. Uh, Jenkins Google Summer of Code is about the Jenkins. So what it means that we are looking for projects which are somehow related uh, to Jenkins uh, 
ecosystem. And for example, uh, in 2020, we also participated together with Jenkins X. So we were also looking for project ideas which were re relevant to Jenkins X. What does mean relevant? If you have a problem, so if you're a Jenkins user, uh, if you want to address it, it might be valuable to the rest of the community and it might be a totally relevant project idea. Um, if you have such idea in mind, uh, my recommendation would be to reach out uh, to the community in the mailing list or in the Gitter chat and to discuss it so that uh, we could uh, see whether we could have this uh, project idea. So in order uh, for this idea to happen, uh, the multiple additional uh, requirements which need to be met. Firstly, it need uh, to meet uh, the GSOC time frame. So this idea should be around uh, 12 weeks of coding or 10 weeks of coding this year. And uh, also we should find uh, mentors for this project idea. If there are interested mentors, if uh, the idea is valuable to the community and uh, if it fits the time frame, then it can become a GSOC project. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, do you have any specific idea in mind? Uh, still, I don't have. I don't have. Mean, uh, I have. Uh, I had a little idea. That means, uh, in my university, in our software project, we uh, built in software, and uh, I need to. Uh, I need to Im uh, actually uh, improve it. Improve it like uh, it, it develop it to. Uh, forward. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as you said, it is better to uh, put my idea on the Jitter chat, right? Mm, yes. Uh, if I had something to something new. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would be good because you can uh, get quick feedback whether it could fit JSOC or not. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there is a lot of generic problems which could definitely uh, hit JSOC. There might be some discovery topics. So for example, um, this year we had a project uh, focusing on machine learning. Yeah. And uh, there was a group of mentors uh, which was interested in this topic. And uh, there were users who were interested in this topic. So mm -hmm. although there was no existing uh, plugin for this particular use case, um, it was still valuable to the community and it was considered as a great uh, GSOC project idea because it uh, would allow Jenkins ecosystem to expand there. Or you just may have, um, uh, for example, a specific tool chain Let's say you develop something for embedded, for automotive, um, and uh, you have particular tools you want to integrate uh, with Jenkins. It could be also a project idea, and actually, uh, it was uh, there was such project idea, I guess, in 2020, uh, integration for EDA tools. Mm, or into some, uh, yeah, for example, uh, plugins for electronic design automation. So again, somebody who's interested in this area could come and propose a project idea for particular tools. And mm -hmm. we would uh, find uh, mentors who would be interested. And then this project idea would happen. So it's not a problem if uh, the project idea limit, uh, addresses a particular uh, subset of the Jenkins community of users. But yeah, this uh, subset shouldn't be limited to just you. If it's a wider community value, then uh, it's uh, potentially a good project idea. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, another problem I had is, uh, 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 like, uh, if the beginners, if the beginners have not much knowledge about the uh, technologies that uh, the project used, uh, like uh, Docker, I have not much, uh, not much. Uh, knowledge on not docker uh, if our project proposal is selected uh, the gen um, is jenkins ready to uh, mentor us or uh, give us a give us a workshop like to improve our knowledge 
or should we uh, self uh, yeah self learn mm -hmm. about that uh, technologies okay so how we commonly do that so when you apply for a project it's mm -hmm. definitely not a requirement that you have a deep knowledge of that uh, firstly because uh, you're, you're a student you're expected to study during this project Secondly, because uh, there is a lot of various specific topics uh, which still need to be discovered. So for example, uh, Jenkins development, Jenkins test tools, you will still need to study that. Um, and when you apply, uh, we definitely do not require uh, you to have a lot of expertise in that. Then uh, if uh, the project gets accepted, uh, there is community bonding phase, and during community bonding phase, we organize uh, additional trainings for students. So how we do that is usually just ask students uh, what additional information they need. Uh, I'll work with the mentors as well. And then we schedule some training sessions, uh, usually for a wider Jenkins community or just for a particular student. Uh, so that uh, we can uh, have these sessions and we could record them. And uh, our expectation that uh, by the time uh, the coding begins, you get at least the basic information uh, for technologies you would be using. So from day one of the coding phase, you should be able to actually uh, work on uh, the project. And yeah, of course, study in parallel because there will be still things to study and discover. But for basic knowledge, we definitely try to provide it in advance. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, do you have any other questions? Uh, 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 how should we uh, prepare a proposal for this? Uh, like, uh, there is a timeline, right? Mm -hmm. uh, are you uh, 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 are you do your company uh, aware of the uh, proposal <coughs> preparing proposals about uh, in the Jitter chat or okay so yeah. Yeah, firstly the Jenkins project is not a company it's a community it consists of uh, multiple company contributors and individual contributors yeah. Um, our main endpoint for JSOC is indeed this chat. And uh, if you have any questions about your application, you can ask there. Moreover, particular project IDs, as you may have seen, they link to other chats because there are special interest groups and other sub organizations within the Jenkins community. So, for example, external fingerprint storage, if you go there uh, in Connect, you can find the uh, channels and you can see that uh, they point actually to cloud native special interest group. So in addition to JSOC uh, channel, you can use uh, the channels defined here to get more information and to get in contact with uh, contributors who are interested in this domain. Uh, regarding time frame, so this is the official time frame for Google Summer of Code. Um, so here you can see that um, uh, the application period begins on March 29 and uh, it uh, ends on April 13th. So what it means that between these dates, you will need to submit a final proposal through the Google Summer of Code website. It doesn't prevent you from exploring the project in advance. Um, so. Uh, and uh, for example, here you can see that the list of uh, separate organizations will be uh, discussed on March 9th. But effectively, uh, we already have JSOC 2021 running and you can start discussing your proposal um, even now. You can discuss uh, your ideas even now. And if you're ready to start working on a, a project uh, proposal draft, again, you can uh, start at any moment. Uh, so you're not limited by a March 9th deadline. You can uh, start doing it later. You just need to keep in mind that uh, not all contributors are available uh, on a 24-7 basis. So some uh, contributors take vacations, some contributors are busy with uh, their projects at work or other responsibilities. 
but in principle, nothing blocks you from exploring projects and uh, submitting proposals even now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, one last question. Uh, actually, I uh, heard about Jenkins from a senior student of our university. Uh, can, can you please uh, give me some more information about Jenkins? Okay, so uh, yeah, for Jenkins in general, you can just go to the Jenkins IO website. So Jenkins is a generic automation server. Um, it can be used for multiple purposes. Uh, it's mostly known for, uh, as a continuous integration and continuous delivery tool. So if you deliver, uh, develop software or what was hardware or any other project, you can, uh, for example, automate testing uh, and verification of your project, or you can uh, automate publishing of your project uh, to marketplaces or whatever. Uh, but yeah, these are just use cases of what Jenkins is. Uh, Jenkins can support uh, various automation flows. Uh, so, in uh, the nutshell, it's basically just a Java web application uh, with distributed uh, build system. And this Java application is extensible. So, you, there are more than 1700 plugins integrating with different tools, supporting different use cases. And it uh, helps uh, you to build your automation pipelines with the TC system. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so if you want to explore more, you can just uh, go through the website. Uh, for example, uh, there is uh, some documentation, including guided tour. So if you just started with Jenkins, you can just go through this guide and uh, uh, create uh, your first job using Jenkins, install Jenkins on your system, and yeah, just get introduced uh, to the to it. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, again, I'm putting links uh, to the meeting notes. So, yeah, uh, this information uh, could be a good starting point for you. And then you can uh, go through additional tutorials if you want to try something advanced. And uh, yeah, some tutorials point to particular plugins, which you again might want to explore for your use cases. So just start from our documentation, uh, try out something. And if you have feedback, do not hesitate to submit it. So for example, if you experience a problem in the documentation, there is a report a problem button which actually just uh, goes to our um, GitHub issues uh, tracker and submit uh, this feedback because it will be also a valuable contribution to the community. Getting your feedback uh, from, as from somebody who just starts with Jenkins. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any other questions? Mm, no more questions from me. Uh, there seems to be an, one another participant there. Mm -hmm. Hello? Do you have any questions? So I'm Miros. Uh, I'm from University of Honolulu. Uh, so this is my first time. Uh, this first time participating. So, uh, Sorry, uh, I didn't understand that. I'm really interested in working with the, uh, you are coming, I uh, request some details uh, past week. Uh,
Sorry, I still uh, didn't get uh, the question. If you could uh, write it in the chat, uh, it's fine. I will uh, answer from there. Can I know the technologies uh, what are using in your company? Oh, yeah, I'll uh, post uh, this link. <clears throat> so yeah, you can just put, uh, put a question here. I put it to the Zoom chat. So they really didn't get the question. If you try again, I will uh, try to answer. <coughs> Do you want to type a question somewhere or just try again asking? I can't find the place that you are typing. Well, just put it anyway, either in this doc or in chat where I sent the link. Or maybe just in the Gitter chat if you prefer. I will be able to answer from there as well. Oh, uh, what are the most used technologies in uh, Jenkins, right? Yes. Okay, so Jenkins itself, it's mostly written uh, in Java, I mean, uh, as a core engine. So if you go to Jenkins, uh, Jenkins core, you can see breakdown uh, by language and technology. So you can see that Java is 85% and JavaScript is 3%. Actually, it's not exactly true because we also depend on a lot of external libraries, etc. So mm -hmm. if you talk about uh, the Jenkins core and the majority of the plugins, it's Java for uh, 
uh, backend, uh, Java um, uh, or JavaScript for front end. Uh, there is also some groovy code here and there. But either these are the core technologies um, within uh, um, uh, the Jenkins core. There are also other components. So for example, uh, our website uses uh, Ruby engine. So even if uh, so, Jenkins IO is basically a version of OSR with a lot of additional information. We also have uh, companies which are written, for example, in Go. So let's say Jenkins Kubernetes operator is uh, written in Go, and uh, there are many other languages. So, for example, if you want, you can write uh, Jenkins plugins in Kotlin. Uh, there was also support for Python and Ruby. We deprecated it, uh, but still, if you go across uh, the Jenkins ecosystem, you can find uh, many different languages. Because again, uh, even on the main repository, we have more than uh, two thousand projects. Uh, mm -hmm. mostly plugins, but there are development tools, uh, there are other components, also we have infrastructure, which is heavily about Kubernetes at the moment, um, and yeah, there is also a lot of uh, different technologies and tools uh, being used there. Is there any particular technology mm -hmm. you're interested in? Uh, I'm still in uh... So you said you're looking for NPM, is it right? Or this I misunderstood? Yeah, yeah yes. Uh, so NPM. NPM. Or not? Yeah, just uh, not one hundred percent sure. So, in npm is basically JavaScript ecosystem, right? Yes. Okay, so yeah, we use npm a lot. Uh, for example, yeah, all, uh, our packaging, including uh, Jenkins components, are packaged uh, with M npm and uh, Webpack at the moment. Uh, also, mm -hmm. there is, uh, for example, plugin side, which is again uh, packaged uh, by NPM. It uses uh, uh, Gatsby under the hood, but mm -hmm. the engine itself is NPM one. So again, you can just take it and yeah, it's NPM React Gatsby with a lot of uh, uh, front end technologies being used. And there are other components like that. So basically, we try to build a new front end and new services uh, using uh, JavaScript uh, stacks. Thank you. Mm Excuse me, I have a yes. one more question. Yeah, sure. uh, can you can you suggest me a project for for a beginner? Uh, like uh, I can do the my best uh, with least skills. Uh, which skills? Just a second. Uh, Sorry. So uh, you're looking for a project for beginner. So by using your existing skills or just to get started. So, projects for beginners, um, you may have seen this page, Jenkins IO Participate. So, this page uh, provides uh, links for contributors interested in particular topics. So, for example, if you want to write some code, and yeah, Google Summer of Code is about code, uh, here you can find some uh, overall introduction and links uh, to different uh, guidelines and steps. And also there is a section for newcomers. Uh, so here there is for example, a beginner guide to contribute uh, some uh, presentations, also outreach programs we organized. And there are newcomer friendly issues which you could uh, start looking at. So for example, if you query GitHub, you can see that uh, there is around 50 issues at the moment uh, in different components. 
So you can see that some issues are related to documentation, some issues uh, actually are related to the code, though there is a lot of documentation issues at the moment in the query. Uh, because yeah, we need to update the query so that it, it excludes uh, the documentation label. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, still find some coding tasks here. Also, for example, there is uh, Jenkins Jira. And here, um, again, you can uh, find, I guess, a few hundreds of issues which have been marked uh, by maintainers as newcomer friendly. So what it means that you as a first time contributor can get started with them quickly because there is clear description of what needs to be done and sometimes links to how to do that. Does Thank it uh, you. answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to check out uh, these guidelines, there is some starting information. And uh, the same for project ideas. In, uh, on the project ideas page, we also have uh, some links to newcomer friendly issues. So, for example, here, <coughs> for example, Jenkins Remote and Monitoring and still uses Google Layout. But here you can uh, find uh, newcomer friendly issues. So, if you're interested in this project, you can just click this link and let's see what we see here. So here we see uh, some issues. Yeah, the filter needs to be again updated. So let's see. Uh, we actually need uh, to add more issues uh, for those who are interested in this project, but you can still find some links in the project ideas. Does it provide enough information for you? Yeah, thank you. Uh, can you put uh, the link to the Jitter chat? Oh. Okay. Just a second. Okay, so I'll put it here. And yeah. So I will just put a link to the entire document. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Tom. So you can start from exploring these links. And again, if you don't see any issues which would be interesting to you, you can just ask because the yeah, maintainers usually have some ideas about uh, what could be done and uh, we do not always uh, uh, create uh, issues for that because even creating an issue creates time and sometimes it just stays waiting for a good opportunity. Okay. So anything else for today? Any questions? you would like to ask? Uh, that's all for me for now. Okay. Rosh, anything from you? Um, I am also <laughs> no more questions. Uh, okay, then uh, thanks a lot for your time and thanks a lot for your questions. So if you have any follow-ups, let's discuss that in the mailing list. And yeah, I will uh, publish the recording tomorrow. So if you want to revise uh, the discussion, you will be able to receive this recording. Thank you. Okay. So that's all. And yeah, thank you. We will uh, do the next meeting next week. So if you have more questions, you can also join this meeting. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you okay, so much. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.